you know I don't like Paddy, but I mean after that speech, you can't hate on him. Yeah, you no, know. I I think he he definitely got a bunch of fans because of that, mm. and you know it's uh, I think that is quite. He went through a lot in Fight Week. Mm. That that is that is really a lot of emotional turmoil to go through while still cutting weight for a fight um, in your hometown. There's a lot of pressure, so. Respect, no. respect to 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 Mr. Patrick. I have to. I, I'm, I'm, I don't like admitting it, but yeah, no yeah. respect, respect. Um, I still want him to fight someone better. Yes. I I, I I I don't think his superstardom at the moment is completely deserved. Yeah. Like that. That I'll stand by. But you, he, he, he fought well. Yeah. I was impressed by him, and and I mean, he didn't gain a fan. But he lost the hater. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a I'm a massive fan of Paddy. I like mm. him. I like him. I like Meatball Molly as well. I like the type of energy that they bring to a yep. fight night. And I think also it has a lot to do with the, obviously it being in London. Yeah. Um. But I I like his marketability. I like him. He can go from being very serious to being a joker to mm. you know addressing. Uh, very serious topics as well and uh, obviously there was you know he had one of his uh, I think it was like a Close little friend, friend yeah. or a, the four year old that passed away mm. and then also now his friend um, you know so uh, again like I don't think to go through that in fight week must have been a, yeah, well, a no, very it, tough it challenge. couldn't have been easy Ma, yeah, and then that's just, why I have respect for it yeah, yeah. And, and also then to pitch up and Jordan you know Levitt he, he looked really good mm, in that fight he did. you know he had good control he had good ca uh, cage control uh, yeah. and I think his grappling is very underrated as well mm. and uh, and Paddy finished him so yeah. you know it was very it was a very cool fight I, I did enjoy the fight um, Jordan Jordan did well uh, yeah. His takedowns and and wrestling definitely, it definitely impressed me. Yes, but I mean, like that that submission of Paddy with the with the arm yeah arm in body triangle was uh, that was cool to see. Yes, because you don't see that a whole 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 lot. Of course. Um. So very very cool submission by him. Yeah. Very very slick jujitsu. So yeah, that was very cool. I I went I went uh five out of six on okay. the main card, uh which isn't that bad I think. Mm -hmm. uh, the blades one really. Got me. Uh, That's the only one. Yeah. And what a way to lose a parlay like that. That was so unfortunate. So unfortunate. So that sucks. Because it was shaping up to be a banger. Yeah. Aspinall is so good. Blades is... Yes. Blades... I think Blades is a lot better than a lot of people give him credit for. Especially after the um, the Derek Lewis fight. Because yes. he got knocked out there. Which was a little bit of a fluke. Yeah, and, and <laughs> everyone wrote him off, off after exactly. that as well. But he deserves he deserves a lot of respect for he's a he's a really good fighter, and I'm excited mm. to see him against Cyril Garn. Yeah, and I saw a lot of people like uh, get upset because he said he 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 doesn't want to take the the rematch against Aspinall, but also. You are fighting, you are ranked number two or three in the mm. world at heavyweight. And now you want him to wait for a guy that yeah. take, he lost. Well, he obviously you don't want to lose a fight mm. like that, but you still lost the fight. And now you want to wait. You want yeah. him to wait for that guy to come back from an injury to do the fight again. It's not fair. Mm -mm. No. So I really do think having him fight the winner of Tuivasa and Gone. So Gone. Uh, well, I, I also <laughs> think Gone takes that, and I think we'll chat about that. Yes, no, we when, definitely will. When that fight is Super coming up. Super excited for that card. That's a crazy card, um, but I think he's in the mix mm. with them over there. You know, so as long as it's not Derek Lewis, I think Derek is gonna do. A, uh, yeah, okay, uh, Blades is gonna do okay. So yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, he's he's a really good wrestler. His his striking has come a long way. Yeah, he's he's a really well-rounded MMA fighter, and and I'm excited to see where it goes next. Yeah. Someone that was super disappointing to me, uh, Paul Craig. Yes, came yeah. in with so much aggression, so much macho energy before yes. at the way in painting his face, screaming, and then pulling guard. Yes, of <laughs> yeah, and I think also you have to give. Uzdemir, his, uh, uh, yeah, well, Uzdemir, his respect, you know, he is a very good stand-up fighter. Mm. And I I actually, I think how that fight went is exactly how I thought it was going to go. Mm. I think it's really, it was a thing where v the control, I think Uzdemir is just strong enough to keep him down mm. without, you know, going into stupid threats that... He stuck every made. single takedown. Yeah. Craig didn't get him down once. Yeah. And that's that's... 
all credit. And unfortunately, if you pull guard and someone is on top of you, you're still losing the round. Mm. Just because even and the commentator, it was quite interesting to hear their perspective as well. Because if if someone pulls guard and and you're a jujitsu guy, you're grappling heavy. Now you're playing into your game, so shouldn't that be counting towards you? But the person on top is still in the dominant position. Yes, it's even very, though there's threats of t- you know submissions. It's so. the easiest position to get yourself in. That's yeah. the thing. I, th- I think that's why it doesn't get scored. I mean, it's it's super easy to pull guard. Yeah. It's not a difficult move. Yeah, like when Gagey <laughs> drops Oliveira and he pulls guard, you're not going to give the takedown to Oliveira because he no. pulled guard. So no. it, it that's it was an interesting take, but also it was like, meh, yeah, uh, uh, not quite. Position here is still winning the fight. Exactly. So. The, the dominant position yeah. should get the score. Yeah. And I was happy to see it scored 30-27. Yes. That first round, Paul Craig did have some success. He missed the leg lock, I think. Yes. And, and stuff. But yeah, you know, Uzdemir was dominant position. It was a fair decision. Yes. Fair fight. Fair fight, you know, fair decision. Uzdemir won. And then we had Molly McCann and then Hannah Goldie, which was a oh, very cool fight. Very cool Again, fight. She, uh, she's really... I think there's a lot of pressure on her. She she has to do spinning elbows in every fight. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a, that's respect a for doing standard. it again. Respect yeah. for doing it again. And also landing it well. Like yeah. they also made it sound like it didn't it didn't land like it was close. But still mm-hmm. having that amount of force going through your arm that is basically you could, blocking it your hurt face. Her. That one hundred percent hurt her. That was a perfect setup for mm. that straight that she then mm. landed and that hook. So awesome fight obviously and then uh, she she's celebrated by jumping on uh, the guy from Boris yes. as well no, but she was she was out of her mind drunk by the time Patty Patty got yeah. done yeah you could see in the cage Patty being all emotional <laughs> in the background <laughs> in the cage oh Patty yes. the baddie and all, that was also quite cool to see her after the fight she's like okay it's not about me anymore mm. you know like let's chance this is for Patty now, yeah. yeah so that was very cool it was cool Nikita Krylov and then Alexander Gustafsson Oof, was a, a... I'm sad. A, I, I'm sad. I, I actually called that fight. I thought that um, I, I really didn't rate... Was it expected? His chances. Was it expected? Kind of yes. Yes. Are you still like heartbroken to see it? Yeah, of, of course. course. Of course you are. He's a, I mean, Gustafsson, legend of the game. Mm. Absolute, like he he is the guy who pushed John, he pushed John Jones really hard. I mean, in that Hall of Fame fight. Yes. I, d- I think him losing that was fair, but it was still such a banger. Yeah. I love him. I mean, he beat the former welter, uh, light heavyweight champ. He beat yes. the Shera. Yes. I mean, yeah, he's such a legend. You can't take away what he has done. It's just very unfortunate to see where, where his career yeah. is at now. And uh, even like Cormier told him, uh, well, made a tweet and said... Um, I think you should retire. I think so too. And I think it, I think that's fair. Like, I think so. He didn't land like uh, Krylov didn't land massive, although he hit him. But mm. obviously, those are shots you're supposed to be able mm. to take. And I think his chin is not there anymore. And it was a. It's it a, was, it's, it's tragic a, it's, to see. Yeah, it's sad. But it's I mean, really like he's a hall of famer. And then Kry- I think it's time to get out. Yeah, and then Krylov, um, you know, he called out Uzdemir, which I like. Mm. I like that fight. Mm. So. Do do that fight. Do that that's fight. A, that's a fun one. So the light heavyweight division definitely is heating up again a yes, little bit. It and is. You love to see it. It is interesting. Okay, we chatted about Paddy and then Jack Romanson versus Chris Curtis. Yeah, yeah. Exactly how I thought it was gonna go. <laughs> I th- I thought Romanson is gonna pick apart Chris and and I, that was very prominent. Mm. And uh, you know, Hermanson had a very good jab. Mm. He stuck with it. He threw it quite a lot. And what made me frustrated out of Curtis's point of view was mm. like, didn't your team maybe think of like throwing, m- circling more to his jab side mm. to th- then throw counters or even like fake takedowns to mix it up. Mm. It, it was like the whole three, you know, like three he rounds. completely shut down Curtis and yeah. you could, obviously it came out in, in Chris Curtis in his frustration. You could see it. You yes. could see this guy is just, he wants to kill, yes. he wants to kill her man yeah. because he's just so frustrated. And then apparently there was beef afterwards. Yeah. I, I don't, I didn't even like notice that. Yeah, I know Chris sure. Curtis like flipped him, flipped him the bird in round three and, uh, and it was yeah. like upset. And, oh, and then I think he flipped him back once he like won the yes. decision. <laughs> yes. So, but also, uh, what I saw was like Curtis being a very sore loser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then obviously saying in, in his post speech, or I think it was just some of the recording that was, 
utilized in that waiting mm. for the decision he was like yeah no he wasn't here to fight he was just yeah. here but also if you're ranked number seven in the world you're fighting a guy that is not ranked it's a big risk um I would do that too. I need to secure the win to keep my ranking so mm. that I can fight up. Why would I now go and, you know, trade bombs with a guy that might knock me afterwards, out? Afterwards, he so. did. I, I know there's an Instagram post that I think one of them made afterwards where, with the, where Chris Kurt was like, okay, yeah, no, I'm sorry. Apologize for my behavior. Like, we're all cool. And, and that's cool to see, but... Yeah, he was getting picked apart. Yeah, he was getting picked apart. Yeah, no, that was a that was a very one sided match. Mm. So. A very abrupt end to a very promising hype train. Yes, yeah, of I, course. I, 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 Curtis was he was obviously was going to fight Drikas for a while, and yeah. and that was a big fight, and people were like, oh, battle yeah. of the prospects. And even then, like I think also if Curtis won this fight, I think that would have been a a, a big, you know, setup. Could have been Shoot. a great matchup, yeah. but also I think now where they are now, I don't think they'll meet each oh. other unless you know like Curtis comes back and you know faces and beat someone of, else, yeah, prominent faces a top opponent. <sighs> and then in the main event, obviously it was super disappointing. Mm. Uh, Curtis Blades and then Tom Aspinall's knees, um, heavyweights Throughout. and knees, they don't go together that well. Yeah, what does this mean for Aspinall's future going forward? I mean, yeah, obviously blowing out, and I think he blew out. He, he probably blew out an ACL. That looked really really serious yeah. for a guy that bounces and is like in and out bounces that's doof, doof, also doof. what i thought is like you put a lot of pressure on those mm. knees f in the way you fight yeah is that going to be something that's going to happen quite a lot and yeah having your acl now um compromised going yeah. forward having that really bouncy bouncy style with hard leg kicks yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I i really hope he makes a full recovery and uh -huh. i hope we can see him like yeah, come back better it, than ever. I hope really it doesn't happen again with the other knee. You yeah. know, because he's so good and I really rated him in this mm. fight. It's the only prediction I got wrong because I love how he fights mm. and I I really rated his chances against uh, yeah. against Blades. So hopefully his body can keep up with what I think his skill set and his mindset mm. can achieve. Mm. So it's it's going to be very interesting to see how he bounces back from this and also who do you give him? Who who does he when he fight? comes back? Do you give him like Derek Lewis? <sighs> I don't because, know. I, I want know. to see him in a technical battle. I want to see him kickbox with with yeah. with Cyril Garn, or like try and evade big shots from Garnu, or maybe even trying to stuff Stipe's wrestling. I want to see him against like these high 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 level opponents. So it's really it's disappointing, and I think he'll be out for a while. Yeah. Uh, so but what can you do? Yeah. And then UFC 277 is next. Hey. It's the 31st of Pena. July. Yes, we have Juliana Pena versus Amanda Nunes. Very very interesting matchup. Yeah, this is not the the conclusion to the Ultimate Fighter. Yes. And um, <clears throat> can yeah, she do it gonna, again? <sighs> The, like if you're a betting if you're a betting man I don't know how the odds look on that fight Pena, that's gonna be Pena very is interesting a, I'm pretty I'm like 90% sure uh, Pena is, is a, an underdog is an underdog Massive. I think Amanda Nunes just like I'll I'll go watch tape like mm -hmm. their fights again but I think Amanda Nunes is a type of fighter to come back stronger from mm -hmm. a loss like that especially how quite um, it was not a walkover by Pena no, no, by no, any no, means no no no, 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 so, no, no. You know, I think Nunes will be able to make the needed adjustments mm. to come back. The thing is, that was the worst Nunes we've ever seen. Yeah, she wasn't. That wasn't like no, that was her, that bad. wasn't the best yeah. best form Nunes we've seen. Yeah. And the thing is, like, if if Nunes comes back and she's like one hundred percent herself, and she's coming in with a vengeance and and a readiness and and just being like in the in the right mindset, in the right flow. Does the best Pena beat the best Nunes? I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. But we'll have to see. Yeah. We'll have to see. And that's also, uh, it's such a, that's what makes the, f like, the sport of MMA so cool mm. is, like, you do not know. And and I think, like, even, like, the matchmaking, where in any other sport in the world, where do you find, like, just recent matchmaking, like, Kamzat Chemaev, who's ranked num number two, Fighting an unranked guy in Nadia. Yeah, I hate that. And fight. then, the, and then the match matchmakers were like, "Hold my Modelo, take this move, because we're gonna ha have a Sean O'Malley face Peter Yan." Oh, like where? In what other Respect sport? To Sugar Sean. That's like in rugby having Paraguay face New Zealand <laughs> in the World Cup final. 
So it's cool because anything can happen. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things where Nate can flip him off. He might get butt hurt and then comes out just like, okay, well. The respect I have for Sugar Sean. Yeah, that just balls on that guy. You have to give Sugar the respect he yes. deserves. I mean, going in there with, like, Piotr Jan, in my opinion, is a top five pound for pound yeah. guy in the UFC. Yes. He is incredible. He's amazing. And for Sean to jump up to this level of competition, going from, um, like, a very. Munoz is not bad, but he's, yeah. he's like, I think it, what, what, he was top 15 or top 10. No, he was in the top 10. Just yeah. in the top I 10. I think so, yeah. It's to a guy like just in the top 10 to like a top five pound yeah. for pounder. The, no, he's number one contender for the Bantamweight yes, title. Yes, but I mean pound he's, for pound. Yeah, he, and oh yes, yeah, pound for pound, one of the best fighters in the UFC. Mm. So, and that's also quite interesting because I think they, Sean was always a, a big proponent of like, pay me enough and I'll fight the best guys in the world. Mm. And he I meant think, it. Yeah, and I think he's getting a fat check. <laughs> yeah. like, like a fat one. Respect for him for yeah. like standing by that. He's yeah. like, UFC pay me more, I'll fight anyone. And the he UFC can, said, he, yeah, Great. Well, he can buy another terrible looking Lamborghini <laughs> after this fight. So it's, uh, that's going to be very cool to see. But also, again, back to, to the point is like, no other sport in no. the world does this. And and this is what you see with even like Juliana Pena and Nunes, which I do not think on a skill set level are evenly matched. Mm. But still you do not know what's gonna happen. Mm. And that mm. is that is crazy. That's the big thing. I mean yeah. if the if the Boca play Paraguay tomorrow, you yeah. know who's winning. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. So and then Brandon Moreno and Kai Kara France. Okay. I like Kai Kara, bro. I, I do like, not him. like him. I'm I not like a him. fan. I love Brandon Moreno. I'm backing my boy Brandon, mm. and I, I do think he has more, much more experience. He does, uh, especially in a five round fight. Kai Kara is coming in hot though. He I, is. I will not miss this fight. Yeah. I don't want to miss this one. So that's going to be a very sick fight. I'm going with my the Lego man. Moreno, Moreno definitely has the better ground game in my opinion. For sure. Um, like, and he's he's a dog. He's an absolute yeah. dog. And also. How how well did he fight? Even like in the pocket with Figueroa, mm. who punches that hard, mm, 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 mm. he didn't take one step back. Yeah, he's not scared of power. He, he's not scared of power. I do not think even if Kai Kara France's plan is to take him to the ground, I do not see him. You know, that's a really good point. It's but the thing is about Moreno, he just has like this underdog vibe about him, and I love it. <laughs> that's why I'm backing him. I'm like I'm backing. I him. really hope he wins. I yeah. really hope he wins, but definitely a fight to watch. And also, I think for for the whole of Mexico, because obviously New Zealand has their champions. And yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. But like Mexico, yeah. You want, we need you want more a Mexican. Mexican champs. You need a Mexican champ, and mm. you want to have you know uh, events in Mexico, and you want yeah. him to headline that. Imagine the scene. <sighs> I, I so, really, really like Brandon. I almost cried when, when he won the belt. Yeah, that was... Against Figueiredo. I, I, had I, saw, a choke. Yeah, I saw like a TikTok edit like with that sad music yes, of yes, uh, yes. him being on the Contender Series or tough and being cut yes, and then yes, working yes. his way back up and then what a story. winning the title. I mean, come on, Brandon. We're backing yeah. you. <laughs> Kai Kara. You were, I, no, no, I'm backing were, Moreno. Uh, I'm just saying Kai Kara is yeah, he's a, a hell of a fighter. It's not a pushover no, fight no, 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 no. at all. And, uh, like, the, the thing is, I don't know. I, I think Kai Kara can take it. Yeah. But I'm, I'm really hoping Brandon does. Yeah. And then we have the heavyweight fights, Derek Lewis and then Sergei Pavlovich. Uh, obviously, you have to back Derek. I'm backing Derek, but again, like, I, I do not think he's going to win this. I think mm. this is a bad fight for him. Every fight's a bad fight for Derek Lewis. Yeah, and then he just <laughs> knocks Derek has people never, out. <laughs> Derek has never, ever had a favorable matchup, yeah. ever. So that guy is better on his feet, wrestling, grappling, everything better, better timing, better speed. That being said... <laughs> Lewis by KO. <laughs> Lewis by KO, baby. <laughs> uh, you can't and, um, get against him. Yeah. And then we have Alex Perez and Alexander Pantoja fighting yeah. each other. I know those guys I, too I'm not well. too familiar with them. Oh, this is a great fight. Muhammad, Muhammad Ankalev. Ankalev. Woo! Yeah, he's taking on... Ankalev. He, he's an, yeah. taking on Anthony Smith. Anthony Smith. Yes, Ankalev is good, dude. He's so Yo. good. And this is a great fight for him. He's like slowly but surely... He's like mm. very calculated in the guys he mm. fight. And and I think that is a very um, smart approach. He's taking the Khabib approach of like 
fighting people just a little bit with a bigger mm. name. Just a little bit of a bigger name. A little bit, a little bit. And now he's 17 and one. Yes. So even if he gets to the point where he's fighting for a title, you know, he's going to be like 20 and one. You'll have so and, much experience. And also the marketability behind that, you know, it worked so well with Khabib being undefeated. Mm -hmm. And now you have Uncle Life, who is this, also this very dominant Russian mm. fighter who is great at wrestling, but he also sparks guys. And I mean, so Anthony Smith is on a career resurgence as well. Yes. Like he's doing very, very well. Yeah. I can't remember, did he win his last fight? Uh, let me check. I can't remember. Um, I do not think he won his last fight. Though. Yes. Oh, he did. Ryan Spann. Mm, that's it. And the one before that, yes, Jimmy yes, Cruz. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He's like he's like on a streak. And the one before that, Devin Clark. But also, not one of those guys are on the level. No, of Uncle Live. Yeah. Uncle Live. I don't know. I think Uncle Live just. I'm gonna take Uncle Live for this fight. I, I also. Think he's he takes he's that. like his wrestling is just dominant, and he's he's actually a hell of a striker as well. Yes. He's good. Yeah. Uncle Live is such a good fighter. Yeah. Potential future champ. Definitely. For sure. Yeah. And then we have like a few, obviously guys that we know pretty well. You know, Alex Morono oh, yeah. is, is fighting oh, is against cool, cool. Matthew Salomon. Well, Sal I've got Sal the one with the long no. surname. Burger. <laughs> Salomon and Burger. <laughs> and then okay. Drew Dober fighting Rafael Alves. Hey, Drew Dober, the unranked. Champ, yeah, <laughs> of the lightweight division. <laughs> yes. The man with the jaw. He always he brings the, it. Huh? He has the same jaw as that uh, a police officer in Family Guy. He has that he Minecraft has that Steve, Steve look. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a few. Yes, this is a loaded car. Crimson chin. The crimson chin. Yeah. So awesome fights uh, ahead, and um, I'm looking really forward looking to forward. It. I think I'll watch. Th I yes, there's a lot of fights. One. Okay, wait. One, two, three, four. Uh, five, six, seven, eight. That's just Prelims. eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty. Okay, thirty-two Two fights. Teams. I'm probably gonna uh, probably stand skip. up to watch the prelim card as well, because holy crap! With the previous, we had this massive fight: Nathaniel Wood and Charles Dude, Rosa. Those calf kicks. <gasps> That's the one but thing his I want to stand up. Yeah, he's good. Is, huh? It was insane. It was so cool to see. It, he looks so... There's like no expression on his face. Mm. And he's like tripping the guy and then punching him. Nathaniel and Wood is a bad man. But he, it looks like he's not applying any effort. And then mm. he lands and lands mm. and lands and lands. It was Because, I mean, he shut down Rose completely. Yes. There was... Yeah. Rose had nothing for him. Yeah. Huh? So that was really a cool fight to watch. I think that was probably... Looking back, that was probably the fight I enjoyed the most. I think... Uh, we we're gonna do a a new thing called mm -hmm. the professional amateurs man of the match. That was the man of the match for me. That was Nathaniel man of the Wood. match, Nathaniel Wood. We know you're watching. <laughs> well done to you. That was freaking insane. I don't like English fighters, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> yeah, it's weird that you don't like English fighters. I don't fighters. know. I like Tom Aspinall though. Yeah, I like him a lot. Yeah, he was very cool. And yeah, so I will quickly want to chat about you. When you saw the news of um, Chemaev fighting mm -hmm. Diaz, I don't. <sighs> and obviously, like he, Diaz has one fight left. They Nathaniel, want to what are you doing? Yeah, but also he has one fight left. He wants to get out yes, of his contract. Yes, yes. Do you know what would be a baller move? Him going in there and then tapping out. Like the moment the fight starts, <laughs> he taps out, he flips everyone off, and, and he's like, just, Yo, "Cheers, and... I'm gonna go. Um, okay, I'm gonna go box now." <laughs> That would be cool. That I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like, th you know the craziest part about this whole fiasco? I thought, I just thought the UFC hates him. Yeah. They don't want anything to do with Nate Diaz, so they want to feed him to Chimaev. No, 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 no. Nate Diaz asked for that fight. He Are you sure asked about that? for Hamzat. His manager tweeted it. That's interesting. He, okay. Nate Diaz. Well, that changes things a lot. Quite a lot. <clears throat> Nate Diaz wanted to fight Chimaev. That and if nothing else, you have to be like, okay, baller move. Yes, I, I can respect that. Yeah, That's insane. Yeah. What are you doing? The balls Why? on that guy. Why would you do this? I think he smoked a joint the size of a meatball soup yeah, no. before he decides, you know what, I'm going to fight. <laughs> like the second round in the world. You have to respect the self-belief. Yeah. You're well, that's the thing that, that the Diaz brothers have always had is like, mm. yeah, I'll fight anyone. I'll fight anyone and <laughs> yeah. I'll beat them. <laughs> and it's also very cool also because I think people forget what a massive fan base Nate has. Mm. 
Like he is, mm. he is one of the mm. UFC's top cash cows. Cash cows for sure. And now you have obviously Kamzat coming in screaming on the mic. You know, <laughs> he's gonna kill everybody, and and they want to build him. It's a great way to you know pass the torch. Yeah, and Nate Diaz is going yeah. out. He'll probably do other stuff after his contract mm. has expired, and uh, and then you have I Tumayev can't say with another highlight reel. Um, I can't say I down. like it. I can't say I like the fight, yeah. but I mean, Nathan, if that's what you want to do, do it. I wouldn't Imagine have done that. Imagine the scenes if Nate taps him in a triangle. <laughs> I'm saying it just, uh, I'm thinking of a triangle or I don't think an armbar, I think, but a triangle. Okay, but then he still needs to exit the UFC. Still, get out of there. Yes, don't take another fight. Yeah. Don't be like, okay, I've beat Jemayev, now I'm going to take on Usman. Uh-uh, quit while you're ahead. Yeah. Beat Jemayev and get out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just like get out of there. <laughs> End it on a high note. If Nate beats Jemayev, it's a fluke. It's it's an upset, and yes. it's not something that's supposed to happen. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I hope he does. Yeah, I'm. I I I always do it, Nate. If, yeah, like I would I would be there for it. I mean, I was cheering when when he when he hit Leon Edwards, and I had money on Leon Edwards for that fight. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, still like no. Sure, just like, <laughs> oh, this is too cool. I don't know. I can. Do, I don't and know. then winning points, he's like, that's so cool. I'll make the money back. <laughs> Get him. <laughs> also, we, we missed the episode. We did. But I also just want to give a Man of a Match award to Matthew Christopher Schnell. <clears throat> I do not know if you watched that fight. Mm -mm. We'll watch it no, now no, no. after filming this episode. He fought Sue Mudarji. Mudiarji. A know. prelim fight or something. Prelim fight on the Ortega Yair Rodriguez. The one with the comeback. The comeback. Yes, 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 Being yes, 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 dropped yes, yes, yes. like five, six times. And then it's finishing like with, a, with a triangle. With a triangle. Yes, I did that watch that fight. That was an insane fight. Mm. That was top shelf I, like that was a fight <laughs> we had like a birthday party type of setup for some of the kids at CIT mm. <laughs> and they were like 11 kids 7 years old and then after the, afterwards obviously they trained for an hour and a half mm. and obviously dead tired eating cake they're on the couches <laughs> they're at the gym and then I was like okay do you guys want to watch fights <laughs> so I was like <laughs> so I was like okay do I show them you know Ortega uh, um uh, Calvin Cato and Max Holloway okay. and I was like do you mind the blood stuff like that yeah. and uh, he, the parents is like no no no, no don't, don't show them that yeah, fight yes, yes. I was like okay but we're gonna watch the Schnell yes. fight <laughs> and you're gonna enjoy it <laughs> <laughs> and they, their minds were blown yeah, so my from, mind was blown from now on Max Holloway Calvin Cato I'm showing that fight to introduce people to fighting mm. and then that Schnell fight. Schnell. That was insane. I, I, I didn't even recognize the names now when you said it, but yes. when you said Ortega fight comeback, I was like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. amazing. It was insane. So we really have a lot to look forward to. We have a great UFC 277 mm. card. Uh, next week we have uh, Jakob Duplessis on. Hey, he great stuff. At, he just he's one, one of my teammates. He fought at UFC with an impressive um, knockout. Beautiful knees. TKO. Dude, I thought that guy was yeah. going to... I saw those knees. I'm like, okay. So okay. we're going to chat to him. After that, we'll chat to DQ, Stefan De La Rey before his fight. And then after that, we'll probably get Drickus on the pod. Get as the well. man so, himself. Yes. Yeah, the episode everyone's been waiting for. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to go check out our stuff, we are on social media. We are wherever you listen to your podcasts and we are on YouTube as well. So go check it out. Cheers. Cheers, people.